Okay, I want to talk about geography. I want to talk about how it's sometimes referred to as the why of where. Um, and, that's, and the reason behind that is because geographers like to ask questions, they like to examine the world around them. They like to look at issues and they like to try and come to a conclusion and then maybe suggest a course of action in order to address that issue. Very much like detectives, they follow a line of inquiry. And as part of that line of inquiry, some of the things they like to do is ask questions, collect evidence, analyse data, um, maybe even communicate some findings based on analysis of the data. And to take it even to a further step is to suggest a course of action on what to do based on all those findings. So you can see that a line of inquiry is very much like the work a detective does. It's, it's finding clues, it's finding evidence, it's finding data, finding pieces of the puzzle in order to understand an issue a little bit more. Now, in order to follow that line of inquiry, um, you generally need to uh, have some certain skills in place so that that inquiry is a good one. And I'm hoping to teach you a little bit about those, what I essentially see as five key skills that can help you um, complete and undertake an awesome uh, inquiry in geography. Now, the first stage in any inquiry requires the use of what I essentially see as three key skills observing, questioning and planning. Now something about geographers is that they like to look at a lot of things. They like to look at things like people, like land, like air, like water, like plants and animals and they try to look at all the connections between those different aspects of the world and they do that because they want to understand what's happening. They want to have a better idea of how they can identify the issues that we face um, every day and some of those problems that need to be resolved. And that's one of the, the key reasons why observing and questioning and planning is such an a important first feature of any inquiry. You need to do those things first. So geographers will ask a lot of questions and they'll ask questions like, you know, what is it? How many are there? Where is it? How big is it? Is there a pattern? Um, is, does it interact with things? Who interacts? Where, does it, where do they interact? Um, is, it, is it changing? So these are some of the key, key questions that you will ask at the beginning as part of your inquiry. Now you'll come up with a lot of, a lot of questions, um, but it's probably important to note at this point that you might have, say, 20 questions based on an issue and you think to yourself, well that's a lot of questions, what do, what do I do with all these questions? My advice is, is to narrow it down to one key question. Maybe that goes, you have to go through a process and start you know, looking at the questions. Can, do, do some of the questions relate? Can we, can we turn five questions into one? And so you're starting to work with a much smaller list. But I think it's important that no, no matter how many questions you, you come up with, is that you, you try and work out and determine for yourself what is the most important question that I could ask that relates to this issue that I'm studying. So one of the reasons why it's important to have that single question to focus on is that it's going to give you a, a little bit more direction on what kind of data um, and information you're going to collect before you get well into your inquiry. Okay. So stage two of the inquiry, now that you've got your questions, now that maybe you've done a little bit of planning, you've decided where you're going to go and try and get your information and data from, um, maybe you've even decided how you're going to organise it, the next step is to, is to utilise a few more skills. So we're going to start collecting some data, we're going to record some data, we're going to maybe evaluate it. So there might be some data, there might be some information that you think, okay, that's good, I want to use that. But this other stuff, I think maybe I might not use that, so I'll put it to the side. I'll keep it there, it might come in handy later, but that's not as important as this stuff. So that's, that's, they're the sorts of decisions that you need to make once you've got all your information and data, that you've recorded it or collected it. Um, and I think it's important to also think about how maybe a little bit further down the track you're going to present it. All right, and that's a, that's a decision that you can make in stage two. 
Um, now, in any inquiry, and like I said before, this doesn't just relate to a geographical inquiry, um, but it is important, is to look at the different types of data that you're going to, and evidence that you're going to use. So we're talking about primary data or primary evidence and secondary data or secondary evidence. Uh, now, primary evidence might include things like, um, if it's relating to it directly to the inquiry, it could relate to things like hand-drawn maps, some field sketches, it could be some photos or images that you've taken. Um, so all, all these things that um, perhaps relate directly to, to the inquiry that you've got. Um, and some of these things that you, you, you might actually record for yourself. So you might do the photos, uh, take the photos, you might put the graphs together, you might uh, make a map or make a field sketch. And I think it's important to, to use that um, when you can because what you're seeing, what you're observing, what you're understanding is important. It's important as uh, the next guy who, who might be doing it. So always keep um, a good close check on those, those sources of evidence that are coming from you in the inquiry. And don't undersell yourself. A lot of what you observe and a lot of what you see is, is important. Okay, so now that we've asked our questions, we've maybe got a focus question, we've collected some data based on the questions, we've got some evidence, we now need to interpret it, we need to analyse it, we need to make some conclusions based on that evidence. And I think one of the things that geographers really love to do is to look for trends, is to look for patterns, is to look for some relationships and draw some conclusions. So we can do that once we have our data, once we've asked our questions, we can do that now. Um, in, in, in many respects we've become a little bit like experts in, in a certain field of inquiry, which is a good thing. Now there's probably a couple of methods, and I'm not going to go in, uh, into them in any great detail. There's the P PQE method and the sheep T method, or the sheep method. I prefer the sheep method because it allows us to look at some different aspects that we cover in geography uh, that will help us in the inquiries. So things like social aspects, historical aspects, environmental, economic, political, technological. They're all uh, wrapped up in this subject that we like to call geography. It's one of the things I really like about it is that it covers so many different broad areas. And so in terms of and once we you know, get to this stage of the, of the inquiry, we really want to um, have a look at how it affects all those different aspects of, of the world around us. Okay, by stage four, we really should have something to say right now. This is the communicating stage. This is where we get to uh, present all of our findings based on um, all the evidence that we've collected and, and analysed and interpreted and concluded. So there's lots of different ways that you, you might conclude, uh, communicate your conclusions. You could um, do a, a, the old good old PowerPoint presentation, um, write an essay, do a report, you have a discussion, do a debate in class. Um, there's lots of different things you can do. Annotator displays are another good um, method of, of showing some of this information. Um, but there's, don't be limited by you know, just what you can do on a, um, with a pen and paper. Have a, have a look at the technology that's your at your disposal. Have a look at you know, how people create websites to get information across. They might do some 3D modelling, which is you know, popular amongst those who are into 3D modelling. Um, and so you can see that there's, there's lots of different ways you can present your findings. And don't always be limited just to one method. Now, stage four is um, where a lot of inquiries might choose to end. But in geography, we have one more stage, and that is the reflecting and responding stage, stage five. Now, this is the stage I really like because we're getting away now from just talking about and learning about an issue. We're looking at how best to solve problems, how best, best to address issues. And I think this is where geographers um, really come to the fore. They have done the study, they've become experts, they've looked at different aspects of an issue and they've determined for themselves how best to address that issue. But where do we go from there? Well, let me suggest a few different courses of action that you might like to take once you've reached this point. There could be things like um, doing a presentation uh, for the whole school. 
uh, for the whole organisation that you're part of. It could be that you um, get your information out on social media, which is a great uh, tool for, for getting information across to a lot of people and a large audience. You might want to contact your local government. Um, who's to say that you can't do that? Nobody. You can do that. Or even better still, go to a Member of Parliament, uh, depending on the issue. Um, you might want to invite some speakers to come and talk to a group of people, whether that's at a school or whether that's at an organisation that you belong to. Um, that's another way of doing it. Or, you know, fundraisers, um, looking at uh, uh, social campaigns to help you, you know, get your message across or to raise funds in order to address issues. There's lots of different uh, organisations that do this um, uh, every year or every day or every week. So there's no reason for me to suggest that you can't do that as well.